drugs. Look at what they say for diuretics and antihistamines and blood pressure medication and psychiatric drugs. You will be shocked at the list of symptoms that are all what I'm telling you, vomiting, diarrhea, excessive thirst, swelling, all of these kinds of things that are produced by the drug are because they're producing in you dehydration. And one of my passions is that people who are on psychiatric drugs are getting drained dry in the brain. It's like sucking the water out of the brain because these drugs are just pulling um, the water that is needed for these neurotransmissions to happen. Another one of my passions is the babies that are coming into the world because we now have a plethora of brain injured children and children who can't function. I got an email today from a, a friend who said, oh, thanks so much for um, the work you're doing. And she said, it's almost every day that I get a mom coming up to me and they're, they're all saying, what do we do for our kids? They all have brain issues, they all have ADD, they can't think, they can't concentrate, they can't behave. What do we do? And morning sickness is because of severe dehydration. Oh, I would give anything to have known this 30 years ago, 20 years ago when I had my children because I had serious, serious um, morning sickness. I mean, I was sick. And anybody that's a mom that knows that will remember those days. I didn't ever drink water. The thing that saved me is that I took a ton of pills for my pregnancy and it took me a lot of water to get those pills down. And I'm sure that that's the only reason why my kids are as good as they are. Histamines rise during pregnancy, so you can have, it's absolutely a need for more water. And the amount of hydration that the fetus gets will determine its future in its structure and its function. Did you know that? Now, I want to make something clear to you that I am not giving you the research um, notations under these because you will get them in the book that's forthcoming on your brain on water and they will all be documented because it will take too much time for us to go through that here but all of these things that I'm telling you are documented in the research overweight do you think an overweight person is gonna need nine glasses of water a day to just metabolize what their body uses and throws off as waste? How many of you think that that'll be? No. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the overweight people do not drink enough water, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're tending to be overweight. It takes more water for a heavier person to complete their digestive and eliminative processes. And that dehydration will slow the metabolic rate down and also on the other hand the right kind of water will speed up the metabolism water moves the fat deposits but I must tell you it must be negative um, ionized water not positive charged water in overweight people get confused with hunger and thirst instead of going for water they go for food and so that creates more of an imbalance and ionized water provides the energetic equivalent of food. Now understand what that's saying. Regular water will not do this, but if you are trying to lose weight and you take the ionized water, it will actually provide energy. It's like a source of food to your cells so that you have energy and your body can burn the fat. Sun exposure causes dehydration. The sun, when you're there, you know how dehydrated we get. And what do people do when they're in the sun and for several hours after? They go get carbonated, caffeinated, alcoholic sugar drinks. And every single one of those creates more dehydration. Of course, sweating creates more dehydration. My son is a great um, guy that works out. It's a water you can drink while you're working out and you don't get that slush in your stomach and you don't feel a, an upset stomach from it. Stress causes dehydration. I look at the hours I used to work, I still work them, but I used to work them without drinking water. Now I have large glasses of water beside me all day long. And I would think, oh, I'll drink later. Oh, I know I need to drink. And my day would just go push, 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 push all day long. And I didn't do my body too good of good. And you know, I've had to undo some of those things. 
But again, it was like I wasn't making the connections, and I believe I wasn't making the connections because I was so dehydrated, my brain couldn't put it together. And I didn't have anybody come and tell me that there really was a water. I had lots of people come with alkaline water and these machines out there, and I'd been checking them out for 20 years. And I said, these don't work. They're not doing one thing for you. Why should I spend a thousand, two thousand? Why should I spend anything on them? I don't want to give my clients this kind of water. So I knew because I was always testing them that what I was seeing on the market really wasn't working. Um, stress will use up hormones. It will use up neurotransmitters, making them work harder. It will use up your vital resources, and you have to have water to keep them functioning. Now, we all know that too much salt isn't good, and using the wrong kind of salt is bad for your body because it will grab water and dehydrate you. But using too much salt, especially on salty foods, because that's the wrong kind of salt, folks. They don't put sea salt on those things. We're going to tell you in a few minutes the right kind of salt to use and how to use salt to help your hydration. Of course, vomiting can cause dehydration. So when you see those um, information on any drugs or anywhere where it says causes vomiting, you know that it's possible it can cause dehydration. What are the dangers of dehydration? Well, if you're dehydrated as much as 5%, it can reduce in as much as 20 to 30 percent drop or make your physical activity go down. How many of you notice a drop in your energy when you're dehydrated? How many of you notice that when you take the right kind of water, ionized, microclustered water, you have an increase in energy? I mean, it's phenomenal what that can do. And if you take any supplements at all, it pushes them to the height of what they can do. So. I can go 16 hour days now with no breaks and just 10% uh, reduction in your water can make you sick. 20% can even mean death. Isn't that amazing? Only 20% you can die. One to 2%, that's very, very little folks, in your brain can mean that you have problems concentrating and thinking. How many of you know somebody, I wouldn't ask you if you had that problem, but how many of you know somebody that has that problem? I think we all do, and at times we all do. Dehydration is a cumulative, it comes together. You see, the average person drinks 160,000 gallons of water in a lifetime, and 75% of the citizens around the world in developed countries are chronically dehydrated. I would have never believed that before my experience with water personally and what I've seen with my clients and our brain um, participants in our brain center. It's absolutely true. People are so dehydrated. One third of the Americans have such a weak thirst sensation that they mistake it for hunger. And look at the obesity that we have. Look at how many of us, we don't like it, struggle with weight. And it's one of the number one reasons is water. If 80% of your brain is water, which runs your pituitary, your hypothalamus, which regulates your weight. And if your body is 70, 75% water, and that is related to your hunger drives and your thirst, we know that water is a huge part of why we are not getting the weight that we want. Brain dehydration. It brings on feelings, if we're dehydrated, of anxiety and depression. The brain doesn't function properly. It uses up amino acids that are called our happy aminos that have to be working. The worse the dehydration is, the worse the depression and anxiety are. I wish, I wish, I wish I could go back to my clients who had such severe depression that they chose to go to uh, psychiatric drugs I wish, and, and nutrients weren't doing it, folks, and maybe you know people like that. Diet, they were doing all the right things, and they still couldn't get past that, de that depression. And there are people that you're going to run into. And the reason is because they don't have the electromagnetic energy moved by the fluids in their brain through the right kind of water to get that depression to be able to do what it's supposed to do, go away. And anxiety is at a height in our world today.